Hey, 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 I'm John Rambo. Now you already know it. I'm Javi Moreno. And by the way, if you are uh, you are asking yourself why I am speaking in English, I am far too much tired to explain it right now. But anyway, I'm going to show you how you can deploy a simple web application implemented with a Spring Boot in an EC2 instance by using the new AWS service, the Light Sail Console. Actually, the, you can find the application that we are going to deploy here in my private repository. Actually, it is, excuse me, my public repository on GitHub. Just go to github.com, figurado slash Pokemon, and you will find the source code of the application. But if you do not want to compile the application, you just want to follow the instructions of this small tutorial, this short tutorial, just go to here, this part, releases. If you click on releases, you will find the binary information of the application, the executable file, this one. You just need uh, to copy this file to the computer that is going to run the application and execute it with a simple Java command. It is because it is packaged uh, as an executable, as a Java executable, a jar file. Okay, you will see it in a minute. First thing you need to do if you want to deploy this application is to have a computer to do it. We are going to create one and institute an instance inside LightSail on AWS. So first things first, sorry, go here to awsamazon.com uh, slash your language slash console and use the sign in button to access your account. I have already filled that, that form and I'm going to identify myself using this button and yes, yes, I know I am really very boring today, but uh, believe me, I'm a bit tired. Anyway, in a few seconds, here we are in the, comp in the full version of the console, but I do not want to manage all the complexities of a deployment. I do not want to create a network and configure security right now. So what I'm going to do is to fill here the name of a new service called like cell and select it from the drop down list. Here, if I am able to do that, yes. Oh, here it is, the shiny new interface to AWS created for humans and with robots. It cannot be more cool. Cooler. So now the first part of the tutorial is completed. You have already seen it into this account and we are going to create a new computer, an EC2 instance. To do that, you can use this big button or just follow this link. I'm going to click it right now. And on this screen, you can, you can ask for pre-installed software in the instance. For example, if you are going to run Node.js application, maybe you will want the Node.js uh, runtime and reinstalled. I would in that case choose this option, but I only need the operating system. Actually, if I choose Amazon Linux, the instance, the computer that we are going to start will already have the, we we'll already have the Java runtime pre-installed. So we just select this one the first and we go down until we find the pricing options. I'm not really sure if my application, the Pokemon application is going to be uh, able to start using the, a computer with only a half of, gig of gigabyte of memory. So I will go I will select a slightly more expensive option, this one, and 
as you can see, you are going to pay more or less a bit more than one cent per hour. This is true. This is the real price that you are going to pay for a computer with one gigabyte of, buy of memory and one CPU. And, and this is totally incredible for an AWS service. It will come with two terabytes of data transfer uh, for free. You can send two terabytes of data from this instance, from this computer, without paying anything, any additional fee. Uh, here you can choose, in this part, you can choose a nice name for your instance. In our case, we will we will name this instance as a Pokemon cave. Okay. And that's all. You just need to push the, this big orange create button. And your instance is being created right now. It will take a few moments. So I will press a stop to, to avoid you the, the time. Yeah, we have already here our instance already ready to launch our application. If we click over it, we will access the control panel of this machine, of this instance. Remember, it is located in Virginia, in the AWS region of Virginia, and actually in the zone V of this account. What we are going to do now is to connect to this instance and execute the instructions to download the application and launch it. And we can use it from our browser. If I, I press this button and you have the pop-up filter deactivated for this uh, domain, you will see how here, uh, an SSH console will appear. Here it is. So you can manipulate your instance right from your browser. For example, I can send an ls, LS command. Oh, this is really dull. An ls command over the root of the disk. Now, this is the content of the root folder, the root directory of this disk. Uh, so if, I, if what I want to do is to download the Pokemon application, I'm going to use the w get command, followed by the address of the file. This is a bit cumbersome, but looks like it is not po possible or, or still at least for now, it is not possible to copy and paste here. So what I'm going to do is to, again, pause a bit the video recording and manually copy this address. Take a look at this, the other tab. And here it is the address of the, of the application, of the executable file of the application. I am to manually copy this address into the other window. Give me one minute, please. Okay, actually it has been less than one minute, of course, because I have edited the recording. I will now press enter and the file is going to be downloaded and the critical, the critical point that you, have to, uh, you need to be aware is that it's going to be aware, of course, on that Institute instance. We are downloading a file in Virginia in the United States. Let's wait a few seconds and here it is. If I again execute an ls command, we will see this file in the current directory, in the current folder. Let me clear the screen and show you the file. Here it is. Now we are going to execute it with java dash jar dash and I will press tab because, curiously, uh, the auto-completing feature of the console works perfectly. With a new enter, touch on, here it is. Our application is being started, okay?
Yeah, actually, it, it automatically creates a Tomcat instance uh, listening to the port 8080. And there is a firewall on that port. You know what a firewall is. A port is the number that the application chooses to publish its, uh, its service, its HTTP endpoint, and you need to open a door to provide access to, to that number, to that port. It is really easy to accomplish this task using the, in the user interface that you have already seen. You just need to go to the network tab and here add another rule to the firewall. Yes, if you know what I'm talking about, they have actually changed here the name of the security groups to firewall. So happy. I just need to add another rule opening the port 8080, the door to the port that we have a view before that our application is using. I will save it. Okay, and this is the public IP of our instance. This is the name in internet of this machine, the remote machine created in Virginia. I just need to open a new tab in my browser and, and computer, thank you, and paste that address follow, followed by the number of the port that I have opened before. And here it is. This is the Pokemon that is living currently in the application that we have deployed with in less than maybe 10 minutes. Uh, of course, just remember to shut down your viral machine or you are going to pay the incredible amount of one cent of euro, of dollar actually, uh, each hour. In order to stop the machine, you just need to go here to the delete tab and press the big red button. Do you want to shut down this machine? Yes, please. Perfect. If I try to reload again our Pokemon, it is not here anymore. We will not have any answer from that computer. Yay! That's all, my friends. Uh, just try to do the same on your laptops with your accounts and experiment. Feel free to try different things or to even investigate how you can connect directly using SSH from your laptop with a command line instead of using the browser. See you the next day and I hope you have arrived to here to the final stage of the lap.